Hello, this is the cannulation training module for the V-Wing Vascular Needle Guide. This module will help you as a cannulator to get ready to use the V-Wing in your dialysis practice. The V-Wing Vascular Needle Guide is indicated for use with arterial venous fistulas, or AVF, hemodialysis procedures using a constant sight method of needle insertion. Several notes of caution must be followed when using the V-Wing. One, carefully read and follow all instructions, including instructions in this training material, prior to use. Two, cannulation through the V-Wing device should only be performed by trained and qualified cannulators, which may also include a patient properly supervised and trained in self-cannulation by a qualified healthcare professional. Three, do not use with needles larger than 15 gauge or smaller than 17 gauge. The use of the V-Wing provides an important means of vascular access for patients. However, the potential exists for serious cannulation related complications, including the following. Local and systemic infections, infiltration, site pain, bleeding, aneurysm, sepsis, abnormal healing or skin erosion, hematoma, inflammation, necrosis or scarring of the skin over the implant area, or inability to cannulate. The V-Wing Vascular Needle Guide is a single component device made from pure titanium. It does not have a septum, reservoir, or catheter. The device includes suture holes for attachment to the fistula, a palpation ridge for detection under the skin, and a funnel to guide the needle to the cannulation window in the vessel wall. The V-Wing is implanted under the skin and attached to the fistula with sutures during an outpatient surgical procedure similar to an AVF creation procedure. The device is intended for use for the life of the fistula. The V-Wing aids in fistula access and directs the dialysis needle to a single puncture site on the vessel wall resulting in a constant sight. The V-Wing is available in heights of 4 mm, 6 mm, 8 mm, and 10 mm to accommodate vessels with depths of 4 mm to 15 mm. The V-Wing accommodates vessels that are at least 5 mm in diameter. AVF hemodialysis patients who could possibly benefit from a V-Wing device include patients who are catheter dependent with difficult to access fistulas, patients having a deep, short segment, aneurysmal or unpalpable AVF, patients with an AVF needing elevation or transposition, patients wanting to self-cannulate, and patients undergoing home hemodialysis. The cannulator must be familiar with and follow the clinic policies and procedures related to the V-Wing guided cannulation technique. Additionally, the cannulator must be familiar with the V-Wing instructions for use, including all contraindications, warnings, cautions, adverse events, and complete instructions. V-Wing cannulation must be initiated under a physician's order and only by a trained cannulator with constant sight cannulation experience. Prior to cannulation, a complete fistula physical assessment must be performed and documented. The assessment should include the look, listen, and feel approach for both the vessel and cannulation site. The cannulator must pay particular attention to infection prevention measures. The double skin preparation technique is required for the V-Wing guided cannulation technique of needle insertion and must be used for every V-Wing cannulation procedure. The first step to AVF access through a V-Wing is selection of the appropriate needle. Fistula access through the V-Wing is accomplished with standard fistula needles, both sharp and blunt. Needle gauge, length, and bevel type should be carefully considered. The V-Wing accommodates needles ranging from 15 gauge to 17 gauge. Initial cannulations should utilize a 17 gauge sharp needle to minimize the risk of backwall punctures and infiltration. Conversion to 15 gauge or 16 gauge blunt needles can be accomplished directly from 17 gauge sharp needles following 3 to 5 sharp needle cannulations. The blunt needle gauge should be selected per physician orders based upon the flow needed to achieve the dialysis prescription. The level of vessel maturity, including vessel diameter, are factors that should be considered when determining the appropriate needle diameter. Clinic cannulation procedures provide guidance for needle selection. These procedures should be reviewed prior to initial cannulation through the V-Wing. Note, 
If the patient has a central venous dialysis catheter, as cannulation of the AVF through the V-wing is initiated, it is recommended that a 1-in-1 method be utilized to minimize the risk of infiltration. The venous V-wing site should be cannulated with a 17-gauge sharp needle and used as an uptake or arterial site, and the catheter should be used for blood return until blunt needles are successfully used at the venous V-wing site. Conversion to blunt needles should occur as quickly as possible, usually within three to five sharp needle cannulations. Once blunt needles are used at the venous site, the arterial AVF or V-wing site can be accessed for uptake and the venous V-wing site used for return. This method will reduce the risk of backwall puncture and infiltration at the venous V-wing site, particularly in patients with a small and deep AVF. Additional information regarding the risk of backwall puncture related needle gauge and AVF depth and diameter may be requested from Vital Access. The appropriate needle length is also critical for successful V-wing cannulation. Choose a needle length based on vessel depth and cannulation angle such that the needle hub does not enter the insertion site. A needle that is long enough to fully enter the vessel but not too long to increase the risk of backwall puncture should be used. The V-wing may be placed on vessels that are from 4 mm to 15 mm in depth. The V-wing vessel may be deeper than what is normally cannulated. Deeper vessels will likely require a longer needle to achieve access using a standard cannulation angle. At the time of cannulation clearance, the surgeon will provide information regarding the depth of the vessel and the height of the V-wing via the V-wing notification form. If you have not received a V-wing notification form for the patient to be cannulated, Request the form from the surgeon's office. For vessel depths and V-wing heights of 8 mm or greater, a fissial and needle length of 1 and 1 quarter inch should be considered. The V-wing aids in the creation of a constant cannulation site. As with constant site cannulation, a sharp needle must be used initially to establish the V-wing site. The conversion to a blunt needle should take place as soon as possible to reduce the occurrence of cannulation complications associated with a sharp needle. Some V-wing cannulators have been successful with blunt needle cannulation as early as the second cannulation because the V-wing guides the needle to the puncture location in the vessel wall. A V-wing site may be considered ready for blunt needle when the cannulation site is well defined and there is minimal resistance to needle insertion. Clinic procedures and physician orders should be followed when determining when to change from sharp needle cannulation to blunt needle cannulation. Cannulation of a patient's V-wing site for the first time utilizes a unique procedure to establish the location of the skin puncture site. Following the first cannulation, the cannulation technique is similar to a routine constant site cannulation. However, preparation for the first cannulations requires a few unique measures. Allow the V-wing to heal for a minimum of three weeks prior to cannulation. Place the patient's arm in a comfortable position that allows easy access by the cannulator and apply a tourniquet. The best arm position will be dependent upon which arm will be cannulated, the location of the V-wing site, for example, forearm, upper arm, inside upper arm, and whether the cannulator will use the left or right hand to perform the cannulation. The arm position for preparing for the first cannulation must be the same position that the arm will be in for all cannulations. The steps to prepare for the first cannulation of a V-wing site are 1. Palpate the cannulation site to identify the V-wing location, orientation, and cannulation direction. The V-wing palpation ridge, located on top of the V-wing, should be palpable. The ridge is horseshoe shaped, forming a bowl with the opening of the bowl directed in the opposite direction of the cannulation direction. The tip of a finger is often used to best palpate the V-wing. 2. Identify the path of the fistula and mark the path both proximally and distally to the V-wing with an indelible marker. The fistula may not be palpable, so a stethoscope or ultrasound may be required. This will help with needle alignment when cannulating. 3. Palpate the V-wing with the tip of the finger and mark the location of the palpation ridge. 4. Palpate the V-wing and mark the margins or sides of the V-wing. 5. Mark the cannulation site 1 half inch or 12 millimeters from the palpation ridge mark in the direction of the bowl of the V-wing. The mark should be in alignment with the palpation ridge mark and the fistula marks. The cannulation reference card may be used to indicate the one-half inch distance. 6. 
palpate the V-Wing to confirm correct location of markings and disinfect cannulation site per protocol prior to cannulation. Infection control measures are critical to avoiding localized and systemic infections. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, including gloves, gown, masks for both patient and cannulator, and full face shield or safety glasses should be used. The cannulator should wash his or her hands prior to donning the PPE. Skin preparation steps must be rigorously followed for every cannulation. For the first cannulation of the V-Wing site, thorough disinfection following skin marking should be accomplished per clinic procedure. After the first cannulation, a double prep technique including scab removal must be utilized. The steps for V-Wing cannulation site preparation are 1. Ensure the patient washes the access arm with soap and water and dries the arm prior to sitting in the dialysis chair. 2. Place an antiseptic solution moistened pad over the cannulation site to soften the scab at the cannulation site. The moistened pad should be over the scab for a few minutes and can be in place while other preparations are being made to begin the dialysis session. 3. Disinfect the cannulation site with antiseptic solution following proper technique and time dependent upon the solution used. Allow the solution to dry. If two viewing sites are being used, a separate antiseptic pad should be used for each site. 4. Remove the scab with a sterile blunt device or gauze. Some blunt fistula needles include a pick for scab removal. Alternatively, sterile tweezers may be used. Care should be taken to not disrupt the skin surrounding the scab. If the skin is disrupted, the risk of infection increases. The scab should be gently scooped from the site to remove as much of the scab as possible. Stretching the skin surrounding the scab may help to release the scab from the skin. If two viewing sites are being used, a separate sterile device for each site must be used to avoid cross-contamination. 5. Change gloves and disinfect the cannulation site a second time with antiseptic solution following proper technique and time. Allow the solution to dry. Note, the cannulation site must not be touched following disinfection. Cannulation of a fistula through a V-Wing utilizes the V-Wing guided cannulation technique. The V-Wing facilitates the technique by directing the needle to a single puncture site on the vessel wall. Begin the cannulation by placing the patient's arm in the same position the arm was in when preparing for the first cannulation and will be in for all cannulations. Steps for V-Wing site cannulation include 1. Always use a tourniquet on the patient's arm. The tourniquet should not cover the V-Wing. The tourniquet should be positioned such that it does not displace the skin and cannulation site over the V-Wing. The tourniquet should be tight enough to restrict fistula flow, but not so tight as to restrict arterial flow to the arm. Note, a saline-filled needle or wet needle cannulation technique may be used for the first few cannulations to reduce the incidence of a clotted needle. 2. Stabilize the V-Wing either by placing a finger over the palpation ridge or by placing a finger and thumb alongside the V-Wing. The cannulation site should not be touched with the fingers to avoid contamination and possible site infection. 3. Contact the skin at the cannulation site with the needle tip. A 17 gauge needle should be used for cannulations with a sharp needle. Align the needle with the V-Wing palpation ridge and the fistula. Set the needle angle to enter the vessel through the V-Wing window directly beneath the V-Wing palpation ridge. The insertion angle will be dependent upon the depth of the vessel. Refer to the cannulation clearance form completed by the surgeon for fistula depth. Ensure that the cannulation angle is within standard of care guidelines. An insertion angle of 25 to 30 degrees should be considered for V-Wing sites with a fistula depth of less than 8 millimeters. If the fistula is greater than 8 millimeters in depth, an insertion angle of 30 to 45 degrees should be considered. Insert the needle through the skin or into the cannulation tract at a slow to moderate speed. Note, if the needle contacts the V-Wing, the cannulator will feel metal on metal. This will feel unusual, but it is not a bad thing. The needle cannot puncture the V-Wing except through the window. Most often, with continued light force, the V-Wing will guide the needle tip to the window. If the V-Wing is contacted and the needle cannot be advanced, the needle should not be excessively forced to advance. Instead, the needle should be slightly retracted and redirected to better align with the fistula and the V-Wing. Then, 
the needle should be advanced with a light force. Back and forth rotation of the needle while lightly advancing may be helpful. Note, it is very important that following the first cannulation, the same skin puncture site and cannulation angle must always be used for all subsequent cannulations to develop the cannulation tract. A blunt needle should be used as early as possible to avoid the risks of sharp needle cannulations. A blunt needle may be used as early as the second cannulation, but usually within three to five cannulations. A blunt needle will be more likely to follow the cannulation tract. A sharp needle will cut new tissue, causing damage to the cannulation tract and increasing the risk of infection. A light needle insertion force should be used to permit the needle to follow the cannulation tract. 4. Lower the insertion angle when flashback is visualized and slowly advance the needle. Note, the V-wing does not prevent back wall puncture and the potential resultant infiltration. A small diameter fistula and a steep cannulation angle increases the risk of back wall puncture and infiltration. Caution should be taken to avoid advancing the needle tip through the back wall of the fistula. This is best accomplished by utilization of a 17 gauge needle and inserting the needle at a slow to moderate speed and decreasing the needle insertion angle as soon as flashback is visualized. Note, a short length of the needle, approximately 1 8 of an inch, should be exposed from the cannulation site. Advancing the needle hub into the cannulation site is referred to as hubbing. Hubbing can cause enlargement of the cannulation site, which may increase the risk of infection. 5. Confirm correct positioning of the needle through the V-wing by aspiration of blood before initiation of therapy. Note, if there is doubt regarding proper needle placement or access through the device, perform an ultrasound imaging procedure, if available, to confirm or aid in placement. 6. Remove the tourniquet and secure the needle with tape per facility procedure. Needle removal from a V-wing site is performed in the same manner as constant site cannulation sites. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, should be used per clinic protocol. The steps for needle removal from a V-wing site are 1. Following tape removal, place an absorbent pad over the V-wing site and remove the needle at the same angle at which the needle was inserted. If resistance is felt, adjust the removal angle. Do not apply pressure until the needle is removed. Applying pressure before the needle is removed may cause the needle tip to damage the fistula. 2. After the needle is removed, apply pressure over skin puncture site in the direction of the V-wing funnel. Do not apply pressure to the V-wing palpation ridge. Pressure should be applied until hemostasis is achieved per clinic procedure. The pressure should not collapse the AVF, which could result in AVF thrombosis and skin damage above the V-wing. Hemostasis clamps are not recommended to be used with the V-wing. 3. Dress the cannulation site and instruct the patient regarding dressing removal per clinic protocol. The previous slides should prepare you for cannulations through a V-wing. A few additional precautionary notes are also worth mentioning. Care should be taken to ensure the V-wing is not subjected to excessive load or manipulation. Patients should notify their healthcare provider if an excessive load or manipulation is applied to the device. Instruct patients to not tamper or play with the implanted device, surgical wound, or cannulation scab. If signs of infiltration or infection exist, discontinue needle insertions until resolved. Begin appropriate medical intervention immediately. If scarring or hardening of tissue around the V-wing should occur and leads to an inability to cannulate with blunt or sharp needles, refer the patient to his or her physician for further evaluation. If device performance changes, the patient's healthcare provider should be contacted immediately. For answers to questions you may have regarding this training module, refer to the V-Wing Starter Kit sent to your clinic from Vital Access Corporation. Further information may be obtained by calling Vital Access at 801-433-9390 or by visiting our website at www.vital-access.com.